Hello, and welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. <laughs> Is that real? That is correct. I'm happy for you. You got a good one. I'm Dan Telfer of DanTelferVO.com because oh. it's my voiceover mm. website and DanTelfer.com got stolen from me. Mm. Oh, man. But somewhere out there, Dan Telfervo is like, oh, God damn it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he can kick rocks. Yeah. <clears throat> well, welcome back, Dan. Happy to have you back for uh, for a just just under the wire here. We're, we're wrapping up the movie. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, but but you made it. Welcome back. Uh, we're you. at minute 126. We're more than two hours into this thing. <laughs> um, and uh, 126 starts with Ben Solo fading away. And it ends with uh, Poe Dameron quoting his hero, Princess Leia, when he says, we did it. Hmm. Um, yeah, so uh, starting out with the disappearance of a Jedi. Is he a Jedi? If you're like totally nope. Sith and then the last minute you recant, are you not a Jedi? You're just like a I, yeah. an expert force user of a non-Sith no, You have variety? to take a test over again and you have mm. to do the, the whole physical test and the written test. Right. Like it, 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 it feels like a title and name only until, you know, you really think about it, and it's like he was a dick. Mm. Like no, <laughs> you know, that like a, especially because I think he was the biggest dick during his time at Jedi training. Right. You know, like he was the worst student. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. an obnoxious nepo baby. I mean, granted, his oh, teacher yeah. tried to cut his head off, but I, I also think that you know. Why? Why? Why even? Why give him more than he's already taken? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you, I didn't know. Did he have a roommate? Hmm. When he it was, was in the, when tense. when Luke tried to kill him, was there someone else sleeping in the upper bunk who was like, "Dude, what's going on?" That is a Did you great keep it down down there. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a space tie on the door. Right. So what? In, it used to be that if you wanted to become a Force Ghost, you had to do special training. Right. Yep. That mm-hmm. was the thing. Is that still? Did did. Is that something that Luke covered in their, his brief time at the Jedi Academy? Like the first thing is, okay, in case you get killed, let's do the Force Ghost thing first. So you're set for life or after I, life. I hate I, this movie so much. There's so many problems. <laughs> do you think I, he had, do you think J.J. Abrams made him disappear because he just thought all Jedi disappeared when they died? No, because didn't we see, well, it, it, there, uh, it's twofold here. So A, yes, Luke probably taught this like the day before they did lightsaber this is like the prerequisite for lightsaber training it's like let's do the if you disappear you become one with the force thing just in case mm-hmm. we're gonna start lightsaber training next week so let's make sure that if any if anything goes wrong you guys can you know stick around yeah um but yeah it's twofold here because we get ben fades away and then leia fades away and leia's been dead for a little while well was she well yeah that's the uh, um I got the impression she was in a coma that whole time. I don't think that they really right. Didn't they like, put did, the sheet over her head though? That seems yeah. like a bad prognosis. Oh no, if you're right. Sheet over I <laughs> I've seen this movie twice and I blocked out a lot of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. I, I I wanted to say she was comatose, but you know what? That's like the crux of my problem and what's going to be, uh, what I am coming from with these minutes is, I spent my whole life looking at George Lucas's mistakes. And covering mm. for his ass and being like, <laughs> okay, this is the back, this is the background lore of why, you know, a man, a man survived the sail barge explosion, <laughs> but mm. like, I can't do it with this movie. It just feels so rushed. It feels like, like you to even say JJ Abrams did something deliberately seems lo- generous. Mm-hmm. Like it, it seems like so much of this was just him nihilistically like going, well, what do we got money for? What do the kids want? You know, like there's just something really <laughs> gruff and depressing about so many of his choices. So I don't, I think when he chose to have Ben disappear, he was like, yeah, he was powerful. He figured so it out just, somehow. Yeah. My fans will explain it. <laughs> well, I, I also think, I mean, not to, uh, I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon of, you know, hating on, you know, the, 
you know, I don't hate what Disney has done and I'm not, obviously I Me don't neither. hate Kathleen Kennedy, but I think that to a certain extent there are like at this point, he basically had, you know, a dozen dots to connect. They had these meetings and they were, they were like, okay, here are things that had to happen. And I wouldn't be surprised if Ben Solo disappearing into the forest was one of them was like, okay, yeah. this happens at the end. This happens at the end. And at this point, like he has to like basically connect all these dots and the, not, not, uh, uh, well, a, not forgiving anything. B, I do, I like this movie a lot up until the end. I like the first, you know, two thirds of this movie. Mm-hmm. Once they get to Exegol, I feel it all falls apart. I, I also want to just say, because I don't think you guys have had me on since Force Awakens minute. Oh, uh, right. I love all the Star Wars movies on some level, except this one. Hmm. Last Jedi was one of my favorites. I know a lot of people, it's like Last Jedi or Rise of Skywalker. A lot of my bitterness comes from just how rushed this movie feel and, yeah. and, and 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 i'm sure you've covered this a dozen times the feeling that jj abrams was angry at ryan johnson and this was like slightly vengeful re-canonizing of plot points <laughs> it's just i uh i think the ideas that he had in this moment aren't terrible I love the visual of the Star Destroyers crash. Like the that that cinematography is still awesome. Kind of the whole movie, right? But like, even with the, I don't know, I they they why did Ray and Ben fall in love? Where was that thread? Other than that, really, I mean, ar- arguably in Last Jedi, that's the horniest Star Wars scene <laughs> when he's got his yeah. shirt off and he does a video call and he's like, hey, but like I. <laughs> I don't think they had any arc uh, uh, other than like him doing a horny 5 a.m. FaceTime call. So like, I, I feel like this wasn't earned just mm. as like a Ray, even being a, like Ray should be way more tied to him killing Han as far as life event. Like, wouldn't you, if, if somebody rescued you from being basically a slave and then took you on in the adventure that would define your identity, and then a dude murdered that person. Would you mm-hmm. fall in love with that murderer? I just feel like there's there's something unresolved about the plot that JJ was like, ah, <laughs> ah, he's, I, he's he's nice now, you know, like they're just a <laughs> <laughs> like he's I, a dick. you know, it's like Darth Vader. To a certain extent, too, he was he took Luke, uh, uh, plucked Luke out of out of nowhere, and and you know it had the extra gravy of him being his father, his long lost father. That's what's missing, right? Him. But like Ray and Han hugged. Han was not a genocider, you know. Right. Darth no, I mean, Vader the, didn't pluck Luke from like literally. Like, well, I mean, Obi Wan plucked Luke from obscurity, they, and then oh, Darth Vader, Vader killed him in front of him. So, oh, right. so Darth Vader and then is Luke the Kylo Ren here. I but, see. I see. So it's, got, um, it's missing the gravy. That's his dad. That's a whole other level. But. You're right. There is a very, there is a very parallelly thing going on there. Um, I just, I don't. I think the lack of having that you're my father. I never knew anyone in my family like connection got super. Like, like maybe if we hadn't spent so much time talking about how she was the gross, like meta offspring of emperor palpatine i wouldn't be so confused if it had turned out that they had been near each other their whole childhoods and it was like oh you're my childhood friend and i didn't recognize you till now or something weird like that like like i don't know put more weight on it i would be i would accept it but yeah luke's talking about wanting to to do something about Vader the whole time, and you feel right. once he figures out his father that he grapples with it. Ray watches <laughs> Ben murder his dad, runs from Ben as Ben tries to murder her and torture her, yeah. and then she's like, "Nah, but you were I'm, I'm horny, you know." I, I don't <laughs> think it really tracks. For, I I'm um. She loves the bad boys, uh, hmm. don't they all? <laughs> Don't they all? But that's avoid an attachment for you, you guys. So <laughs> you I think um, I think it's a, it's a real shame that JJ decided to do that because it also takes away some of the gravity of the moment. You feel like I oh, got insta redeemed. Yeah, 
just just a total dick changed his mind died good job now you're a ghost <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah he didn't again, even he didn't even have the he, he didn't even get the vader benefit of temporarily killing palpatine by the time he came yeah, back he palpatine was already dead Ray so did was, all yeah, the good he just waited stuff. it out he saved ray i guess he brought her back to life so after the fact yeah yeah uh, this will be my first uh, uh, instance of today uh, talking about in the, the Star Wars, The Ooh. Rise of Skywalker Expanded Edition uh, by New York Times bestselling author Ray Carson. Huh. He does, it, yeah. um, uh, Kylo Ren does say like, well, like. Oh, he talks he, in, the, the scene, in the scene in the in No, the no, his internal monologue. Oh, okay. Is, um, although we'll, we'll get back to his external monologue in a sense, but. He he has a moment where he's like, well, it, it's not going to undo all the nasty stuff that he did, but at least he did bring Ray back to, you know, he brought Ray back to the universe and that's something. <laughs> the Ray back like, machine. <laughs> is it a good yeah. novel? What do you give? How many stars do you give the novelization? Because I, yeah. I, how many stars um, do you give the novelization? I feel like I have, eight years ago, I mentioned, I really liked the Phantom Menace novelization. Right. Was that Terry? Um, Terry Brooks. Terry Brooks. Yep. Yeah. It's really good. Um, yeah. I, I don't I don't doubt it. I um I have a hard time with this because I'm I'm reading it piecemeal, just kind of like the last right. the the um Last Jedi one was was good too, but again I was reading it piecemeal. Huh? Jason Fry and this one's Rick Carson. I think they're do, both doing a good I can't imagine how annoying that must be. You know, do, working on the movie and having things change at the last minute and you're you got a whole crew with you, but then like working on the novelization and you've kind of got, you know, you're working from a script and then all of a sudden like, you know, most of the way through and then they're like oh we changed the way everything works yeah and i've worked with readapting intellectual properties a bunch of times and they're usually so brutally like cruel and patronizing about what they expect you to put up with yeah like, it's not your intellectual property it's ours you're yeah. you're gonna write what we Iron say Man. sucker <laughs> yeah. and and i they always get for star wars such high profile novelists where you're like wow this has got to be somebody with at least experience, if not integrity and kindness in their heart mm -hmm. and long resume. <laughs> and Disney is just like, listen, you cuck. <laughs> you do it this way. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I wonder if it's good. You should read the whole thing and, and tell me if it's good. And, and I, your listeners too, because they would be more interested in their own <laughs> uh, interests than mine. Oh, you know what else? I, I think I, here's the side. Side note, I, I uh, was cleaning up my, my studio and I realized that early on in the season, I also bought a uh, former guest of the show, Ian Dosher, wrote William Shakespeare's Merry Rives of Skywalker, bought it at the beginning of the season, forgot about it completely. So there have been mm, no notes. That sounds cool. From that. It does sound cool. It's a, it's a neat little, there's little illustrations. There's a, Sounds like some good that. credits a, material. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. It's a good, anyway. So Ian, sorry. Also um, does, yeah. Do we gonna assume that Ray knows what's going on when Ben Solo disappears? Does does she know about? Oh yeah, he's turning into a Force ghost, or is she just like, what the hell? I think because of the dyad, this is the the oh, yeah. the catch all the for dyad, everything uh, in this in this movie. It's like yeah. Force or dyad. I I do want to <laughs> say too for our for the five minutes we're about to share together, the beat, the like dramatic beat of him disappearing, sort of starts this domino effect cascade of just fan service -y moments that make absolutely zero <laughs> sense where yeah, you're like, Oh, it all <laughs> that could have been cool, but didn't earn it. Could have been cool, but didn't mm -hmm. earn it. And that's what this feels like. This is the first of many. Uh, I don't want to spoil what's coming ahead, but there's a, I really like the minute that comes after me. God bless whoever gets that. But when <laughs> Ray shows her lightsaber and decides what her last name is, I think right. that is. I think that's a really fun moment. That if JJ meant that to be the last beat when he started any part of this, good for you. Fun final shot. But because he didn't earn it, that's why people hated it, whether they know it or not. And it's just like, especially coming after this. Oh, this montage. <laughs> just this. Mo there's so many things coming up where I'm just like, yeah, that would have been cool if you'd given it any space to be earned. But it's just. It just feels like he was he was tired one day. I was like, "Yeah, we got to do that. Got to th <laughs> throw that in there. Got to." So this the Kathy Kennedy was in the back turning the light on and off, and he was like, "Oh, yeah. um, okay." Um, <laughs> then, um, yeah, then they hugged, and um, uh, there was a, a, an Ewok. Um, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, I do have to say, 
uh, kudos to you, Dan, for being consistent. Because if you, I don't know, you said you saw it once, but I don't know if you remember that we went to go see it. You and me and Belknap. Belknap has forgotten completely. Yeah. We, we, we asked him about it. We're like, hey, remember that time? And he was like, oh, yeah, I don't remember that at all. That was, but, that was the second of the two times I saw it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but consistently, you, uh, I was like, yeah, I like that. And you were like, no, that was terrible. You, you disliked it from the get-go. And so I, I, uh, I, I'm not surprised, but I, I, I applaud your consistency. Yeah. And I also want to really tell your listeners and you, I go into every single movie with an open heart. I found a way to like the prequels, despite having several year-long gaps of just being like, why did that happen? But I really feel like this is just the sloppiest. Mm -hmm. This is just sloppy slop with so much money behind it. And I just feel like JJ had so much money to do whatever. <laughs> and they begged him to do it. He wasn't going to do it, right? They begged him to do it. And then he was on this really tight timeline. And I think he didn't sleep. I think mm. he didn't delegate any decisions. And I think he just was like, all right, I'm smart. I, I can't sleep till this is done. Let's do that. You know, and, and it, there was just cynicism. That's a Star Wars. How hard could it be? It's just cynicism. True. It feels very cynical, this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I do, I do uh, like the shots of all the space junk falling down out of the great sky. Great shots. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. Great yeah. cinematography. Yeah. I love it. Um, What's cool. It does make me... Um, well, first I was like worried about like, oh, what about the people who parked there? And like in particular, <laughs> you know, Ray and, and Ben. And then I was like, oh, and then, well, we see Ray flying out of it. But that does that mean that that this antique, uh, um, right. you know, vintage TIE fighter that, that uh, Ben Solo flew there is going to get crushed by space junk? Sorry, Shot classic car fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, it yeah. looks like a Bespin is about to get speared by one of those things, yeah. right? They needed some, th something for scale there. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, oh, no. Oh, it's okay. They're celebrating? Okay. I predict that when the Ray movie comes out, part of the story will be they have to retrieve something from Kylo Ren's mm. crashed uh, TIE fighter. They have to mm. go back to Exegol. Interesting. And I, I do hope that I would. I think if they just did a standalone Ray movie, it could be amazing. I hmm. dare them to do it. They don't, they don't have to cram all this arc in. I bet they could have real fun with some of that stuff. Yeah. Jamie Foxx. Uh -huh. um, and when, when we see... I don't uh, get the reference. Ray, the movie. Oh. It was a standalone. I don't think they made a sequel, but maybe... You not. silly boy. <laughs> um, we see Ray, first of all, Ray just like totally at the end of a you know she just had a really you know she was basically dead so you woke up had a bad day. got in the car and drove off <laughs> it was just like alright yeah. well you must have really gotten a lot out of Kylo Ren you probably could have left him with a little bit I don't think he had to kill himself to bring him, like, <laughs> if he brought you back enough that you could just he's get up like, and drive like <laughs> he's like oh I have to give her a comfortable ride home yeah. yep I'm dead <laughs> <laughs> um, now she can play the guitar she used to not be able to play yeah. the guitar <laughs> He could have held on to that and lived, but no, he was like, ah, I don't like the way I play. I got to learn to thumb pick. That's too hard. <laughs> Which then now I'm picturing cut to a different closing credits of like Ray playing the guitar over, you know, when then we get the montage of, you know, scenes all across the galaxy while Ray is playing the guitar. Is it uh, like, is she, is, it, is she like shredding or is it acoustic guitar? What kind of, what do you picture? I'm assuming she's kind of like, um, like David Gilmoring. <laughs> yeah, probably. You, you bring up an excellent point, though. This is kind of the introduction into the Star Wars universe of a new force power, which is I touch you and give you all the energy and midichlorians and soul juice, and suddenly I die. And I did wonder during this scene, I'm remembering now that I wondered this, you know, three, four years ago. Like, is that why he disappeared? Is this not quite like forced ghosty disappearing? Is this mm -hmm. like... He, he drained the drum and now he's gone poof, kind of a disappearing. <laughs> yeah, not only well, did he erase himself, but then Leia also disappeared too. He was Yeah, really he had to suck up some about. Leia energy. <laughs> mm. Yeah, they're all inside of Leia. Sorry, of Mom. I like, like one other, like, his, then this is, the, here you go, call back already to something that doesn't exist, but uh, cut to uh, his roommate, like, uh, out somewhere else. It is like day job in the galaxy. Like, what? what? And he just disappears too. <laughs> <laughs> the three of them. <laughs> oh, you know what? I remembered the free emotional labor that I did for J.J. Abrams for this. I was like, oh, Princess Leia was like, she knew how to do it. 
General mm-hmm. Leia, she knew how to be a ghost, but she was waiting for Ben. She, right. It was like it was like unfinished business for a ghost where she was like, oh, I'm going to stick around in in the corporeal plane for a minute so I can guide Ben mm-hmm. into ghostum. Or right, he, so she was controlling so his I think body she was, and made him heal Ray. Well, that's gross because then, no. then she was she was controlling who he made out with. And that's disgusting. But mm. I think that um, to Skywalkers, was, <laughs> that's how I justified it in my head when I was <laughs> upset. Hmm. Well, what if that didn't work? What if, you know, like she was like, all right, I'm going to hang out until this. And then, and then, uh, then I'll, I'll teach Ben how to get out of here. And then he does only, you know, he only gives Ray enough to survive. Like if he survives this and goes on and then Leia's just kind of like, Hey, what? No. Okay. Wait. All right. I think it'd be and all she's right. Kind of like has to like, hang out in like Jedi limbo for like 40 years until he finally does die. Good. <laughs> Anything you could say Pete, would be a better there. movie. Maz is sitting there watching the body slowly decompose. But like, uh, anytime now. You're still describing a better movie. So, you know. <laughs> when they show Maz's reaction, I don't quite know what we're supposed to. Maz's think... reaction reminds me of a lot of the past 10 minutes where it's just shots of people staring. And it's up to the mm-hmm. audience to kind of fill in what we think. Because mm-hmm. Maz just stares and like has a kind of tight-lipped. It's not supposed to be a smile, smile kind of, because she's like, oh, she's yeah. at, like at peace now. She's like mission accomplished. She was waiting to guide. Now she was going to go guide her son. Yeah. And she'll be- I think it was supposed to look like when Yoda would like look off with like, hmm, oh, okay. kind mm. of a thing. Needed I some thought she lights. was like, oh, thank God. I was going to have to dig a, bo- dig a, a grave to put this body in. And now <laughs> all done. Or who two seconds Chewie later. Would, Chewie would have She pulls out her that. phone and be like, all right, cancel the backhoe. <laughs> Oh man, we haven't even gotten to the chewy business yet. No. Yes. Um, um, I had a question. Um, in the, they don't have a new red five by now, you know, like Ray, Ray flies up and is just like red five is in the air, and I like cut to you know some weird alien or being like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been here the whole time, and they're like, no, 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 no red, the old original red five, like oh. <laughs> I think it's a sports, the sports thing. It's like they retired. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that helmet retired was number. sitting up on the side of the stadium until yeah. they. Right. Yeah. Ray looks great in the helmet. Ray looks mm-hmm. great in the helmet. <laughs> Go ahead and make the Ray movie. Yeah. I'm surprised Luke still had the helmet. I can understand the ship being around, but I would have assumed the helmet kind of would have gotten lost in the ocean during that time. Yeah, or at yeah. least kind of like um, probably sco- locked, scored and eroded. Right, mm. yeah, or bar- barnacles all over it. Yeah. And, oh, that would've been cool. <laughs> an octopus mm. stuck to her head. <laughs> it's right. almost like they rushed it. It's <laughs> almost like they didn't little, think about it. Like anemone sticks his head out. It's like whoa, and like goes back in. You know. Did the um did the people's army destroy every single star destroyer? I think they should have kept one and then blown up Exegol with it. Oh, there's you know? going to be mm. some kind of general Thrawn business eventually in oh, the right, expanded where, universe, right? Yeah, where yeah. they did. Some They're of them totally got right. away and now now uh Sheev is in some other galaxy preparing Sheev. to turn and it's just well, a never ending uh, <laughs> Every time you casually call him Sheev it makes me laugh. I'm going to come back to that too. Basis. I have two, so two, two, at least two points of reference to make about. Uh, well, I'll do one now because we, we, this is the end of the Kylo Ren business. Yeah. Uh, so I did want to come back to the the Star Wars uh, expanded edition, the Rise of Skywalker, uh, by Ray Carson, New York Times bestselling author. Mm-hmm. Um, she, uh, we do get a little bit of Kylo Ren's kind of not not his internal monologue, but um, <coughs> when Ray, Ray stood over the place that Ben had fallen. Staring down at his empty tunic. <laughs> Tears streamed down her face. He had sacrificed everything for her. She did not mourn Kylo Ren. Mm. She would never mourn Kylo Ren, but she dearly would have loved the chance to get to know Ben Solo. Mm. It felt like half of her was missing, and she supposed it was. The girl who had felt alone for all those years on Jakku had been part of a dyad the whole time, and just when she discovered that precious connection, that incredible oneness, it was ripped away. A Every voice time came she to her. She's in, they pull yeah. her back out. Sounds like love bombing to me. <laughs> <laughs> a voice came to her through the forest, clear and strong. I will always be with you, Ben said. Oh, every she breath sp- you take. Get off right. my jock, Ben. I want to move on. <laughs> <laughs> she smiled. Let the truth of it wash over her. No one is ever really gone, she whispered. Remember that? No one's ever really gone? We said that before. It does sound like a horror, horror movie tagline, like Pet Cemetery 3 or something. But um when did they say no one's ever really gone? I, it sounds familiar, but I can't place it. I'm trying. Doesn't I'm gonna give it say a, it about? I'm gonna give it a quick goog. Han Solo, I think. Oh. Huh. Where it's, where it's somebody? They de- 
that's like the, that's like the, them. She's like no one's ever like, really gone. Can you imagine? Next time I go to a funeral and I go up to the grieved, I'm going to say, you know what? No one's ever really gone. <laughs> see, how, Don't, see how they react I, to I it. I feel like. <laughs> Oh, like, this is it's in Last Jedi. Say that. Luke oh, says it in the Last Jedi, Jedi. Jedi when uh, Princess Leia is mourning that Ben Solo is gone and never coming back. Luke says, "No one has ever really gone." Oh, Luke oh, there says you go. it. Okay, All right. yeah. It might it might get said before that too, but um, boy, oh boy, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, to a certain extent, not to get too, not to alienate too many of our listeners, Alex, but I feel like like. That is a common thing, a common sentiment. Not in exactly those words, but, you know, when, when you go to, like, a wake or a funeral and people are just like, oh, like, you know, he's in a better place and he's not, you know, like, at least he's... Ugh. Well, that I can know, see, like, but saying well, no one's ever thing. really no gone one's ever is really like... Gone. It's like no, but that's like saying, this is loss you're experiencing, you don't need to... No one's ever gone. Why I, are you crying? <laughs> for what it's worth, I think two things. One, there's nothing philosophically intelligent you should try to say to someone who's grieving right Right. like you should just be there for them and not try to be like well i know how you should deal with your horror (laughs) uh but also i as a secular person when people say they're in a better place i'm always like what if you can i curse just once yeah right can you bleep it i'll be like why don't you get fucked but if like (laughs) But that's because I think there's like this understanding that there must be an afterlife, but there's something to me about saying no one's ever really gone. Not that this is a brilliant line that I really want to defend, but there is something about that where I'm like, oh, like, we are all a part of a oneness or what, what was here is still there with you. Like, at least there's something I think more comforting about that to me than what feels like it could be a lie, which is like, oh, well. When they were with you, it kind of sucked, and now they're in a magic place full of pizza and comfy couches. <laughs> or, you know, six feet underground, it does sound nice. It's like, it's cooler, and it's, like, quieter. Oh, I don't man. know. Global I can be sold. warming is so much easier down there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless you're... Um, anyway. And again, Moving not on. to ruin things, but to... Uh, <laughs> Alex is uh, like Jesus. <laughs> why we're here. Alex is like Jesus in many ways. Um, yeah. The... Um, <laughs> The, to not to throw in the, the you know the modern comedy uh, you know Family Guy style cutaway things, but I, I uh, again it would be funny to do. Um, uh, did I say Modern Family or Family Guy? You said, I think family I said Modern guy, Family I think. Guy. Okay, I think you said Modern but, like, Family Guy. Yeah, you, that's yeah what Modern happened. Family Guy. It's my mashup. <laughs> uh, here's my, here's my spec script for a mashup. Um, no, but the the if you do um, you know in my head the the cutaway here is like no one's ever really gone. Except for Grumbolt, and he'd cut to him, and he's like, mm, you know, and he's Aww. gone. He's like out there somewhere <laughs> in the distance crying. <laughs> That's so Upset. family guy. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Do the, does the resistance take prisoners or are they just kill everybody? Mm. Mm, anyway, that's a great Because, you know, before it was the Empire, they were all people who lived. They were all like fellow Galact Galaxy residents. You know, mm-hmm. this is like a foreign army who's now invading. So I don't know if they would treat uh, them. Maybe sometimes. I mean, the resistance is a little more empathetic than the New Republic, right? New Republic is kind of like callous and spread thin and dopey. Oh, but the New Republic had, they, they had, uh, you know, kind of repatriation for all the Empire people. Oh, that's right. Is uh, that in Kenobi? In, is that in, isn't that where they cover that? One of them. I know. It's in uh, Ahsoka and also in um, uh, Andor. Andor. No, uh, it was in the it was in the other the episode of Kenobi that was like supposed that was like Andor or the episode of Boba Fett. That right. Was one of the episodes. Of I the think other it was shows. A, an episode of Kenobi that was actually good. It was. Right. It was like where they took. I must have missed I, that one. I'm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I love you and McGregor, but he mostly just walked around Runyon Canyon. That was pretty much mm. what that show was. <laughs> um. Well, that is pretty much all I had for 126. I know we got some more. Uh, we got some celebrating and montaging to oh get boy. into tomorrow. So. <laughs> oh God. Um, I have. Uh, I've wondered. Can I say one or two other things? Sure. Um. <clears throat> I, I, you know all the star destroyers. Mm-hmm. I was watching I the battle the and I was trying to think of a, I thought of another battle where a bunch of ships were stuck in the harbor and were just victims to a bunch of planes coming in and attacking. So basically mm. the resistance is like the Japanese of Pearl Harbor. They were all sitting mm. there in dock and suddenly here we come in and sneak attack and, mm. and, and kill everyone. So now who's the hero? Mm. Huh? Interesting. And, um, so do you think yes, they Finn, have like Finn a, also reveals a that all the people on Exegol on the, <laughs> 
Finn reveals that all the people in the galaxy are rising up. Yeah, out of the blue. It's like, oh, by I the way, oh everybody's, everybody's rising up. <laughs> the, yeah, the exposition lines are so brutal in these five minutes. I really, there were so many times where I just, I, I just was like, rewatching yeah. this. <laughs> Which, you know, same, like, it, it, like, we didn't have it in the original, but when the special edition of Return of the Jedi, they just threw in those scenes of everybody celebrating across the galaxy. It's right. just like, all right, it doesn't make much sense, but I get it. And you could just show it, and we'll be fine. And here it's like same deal. It's like it doesn't really make any sense. Like, I, like what? Like, yeah. like a news flash went out, and everybody was like, "Oh, you know what? I'm, I, that the secret Sith fleet that I didn't know about, uh, it's gone. <laughs> so let's let's destroy that star destroyer." It feels yeah. like a musical, right? Like it feels like that elevated reality where people say yeah. things they yeah. never would say in real. Like, what's what's this? What's this from like Nightmare yeah. Before Christmas? <laughs> just level of just right. like, oh, the people are celebrating. You know, like <laughs> why would you say she, that out loud? <laughs> As somebody runs in from off stage, like, you're like, hey, governor, we have people are revolting, yeah. people are rising up all over the galaxy. And then you just hear the doo, doo, stink doo, on doo, us, doo, yeah. like starting up. <laughs> uh, to be fair, this is basically the same beat as the Return of the Jedi. Yeah, they totally. blow up the Death Star, and suddenly I, you see yeah. people on best, you suddenly see people on Bestman and Tatooine uh, and everyone. You know, to be, double fair, special edition only. <laughs> and I think to be fair implies <laughs> that. This is no worse than Return of the Jedi, and I vehemently disagree. <laughs> okay. I think I think of all the cynical things that got ripped off, to rip off the ending of Return of the Jedi, which a lot of people didn't like, but I did really like because I was five when I saw it and was mm -hmm. like magic. But like it was, they're ripping like they he did nothing. JJ did nothing with this movie to me, and then he sweeps <laughs> in and he's like, well. I have a lot of work I should have done, but instead of that, I'm just gonna copy paste. Good night, everybody. <laughs> and and to sit to do the to do that at the end, I think was extra insulting for me. I think I think there was a lot, like especially the, the our final, well, the minute after mine again, the like Ray just alone. That's a great way to end a movie. That's different. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Uh, also, the slight difference with the Return of the Jedi ending is that all throughout this movie, we are told thousand times that no one is resisting and the people have given up on them that there's no one's fighting right. back and now and we did not have that in return of the jedi so it seems mm. to come out of nowhere in this situation where return everybody's of the jedi, we didn't happy really know what the yeah yeah we've yeah. cured depression yeah. there you go well, let's continue the celebrations tomorrow yeah i can't wait to see who shows up uh dan can you come back tomorrow to talk about some celebrations i'll move around my schedule all right well, that's what we, we like that we appreciate that and uh, listeners, we appreciate you. Um, if you, uh, um, we're just about, you know, we're scant minutes away from, days away from wrapping up this movie. When we do that, where can you find us? Well, um, StarWarsMinute.com slash Patreon to get you our Patreon page. We're going to be dropping stuff regularly there, as we always do. So if, you, if you're if you missing your, your fix, your Pete and Alex fix, we're going to be over on the Patreon every week. And, um... Also, uh, StarWarsMinute.com slash YouTube. Keep an eye on our YouTube channel. We're going to be posting some original video content in the intervening time between this and who knows what comes next. We'll see. Um, but uh, check out those two places. Get yourself subscribed and ready and whatever else. Um, and we'll meet you back here tomorrow for a brand new Star, Star Wars, Wars Minute. Minute. Star Wars Minute.